minus 10, 9, 8, The clock is seven, operating. We're underway. Thank God it is good. Endeavor, go and run left. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the 2014 USCSA National Championships as we broadcast to you live here from beautiful Lake Placid, New York, the home of the 1932 and the 1980 Winter Olympic Games. And we are reusing the same run for the giant slalom used back in 1980 here today as we bring you live coverage of the second run of the Women's Giant Slalom National Championship. Hi, everybody. Boss Hogg alongside Alex Beatty bringing it to you from the broadcast center here at the base of the mountain. And we are ready for run number two. And in about an hour and a half, we are going to, uh, to crown a 2014 USCSA National Champion. Alex, a great first run for the ladies. We only lost six or seven of our original 102 racers. A great set by Coach Skip Fox earlier this morning. Uh, but it looks like there is one lady to beat today, and that is Rocky Mountain College's uh, Frida Svedberg. She threw down a lightning fast run earlier on this morning. She's going to be tough to beat today. Absolutely, boss. A full second and a half faster than second place. Rocky Mountain College looking very strong, sitting in first right now in the team standings. Sierra Nevada College only three and one-third seconds behind with uh, Brown University rounding out your top three. So still anyone's race here as we get into the second run of Ladies GS. A more, uh, a more technical course set this afternoon. Uh, some very turny portions up at the top of the course, leading into a very straight section down into the middle third and into this bottom section that we can see here from the timing house. Very straight, very steep, and very fast conditions. Should be tough for some of these racers, but should lead to some very quick speeds across this finish line. Sit back and relax, folks. We've got a barn burner of an afternoon of ladies' collegiate ski racing on the plate for you on the USCSA Broadcast Network. The 2014 USCSA National Championships are brought to you in part by Patagonia, their mission to build the best product, cause no unnecessary harm, and to use business to inspire and implement solutions to the environmental crisis. Learn more at Patagonia.com, proud supporters of the USCSA. And by Reliable Racing, whether it's Alpine and Nordic ski racing apparel and equipment, hill and event supply, sports timing equipment, or hard-to-find race gear, Reliable Racing is your one-stop shop. Check them out on the web at ReliableRacing.com. And by Hurricane Racing. When it's team, Alpine, Nordic, or cycling race apparel you seek, Hurricane Racing delivers. Demand the very best in custom printed ski suits, jackets, pants, and race apparel. Demand Hurricane Racing. HurricaneRacing.com. Official sponsors of the 2014 USCSA National Championships. And by Twitchell Sportswear, the home of Yeti Apparel. When you're facing truly abominable weather, the Yeti has you covered. Check out their complete collection at twitchellsportswear.com. Proud supporters of the USCSA. Clouds rolling in here in Lake Placid. We started out about 32 degrees earlier this morning. Temperatures have risen just a bit. As we take a look at our race and course conditions now, we'll uh, see what we've got in store. Of course, Ron Bonneau now setting the second run here of the ladies' championship. Our forerunners now at the top awaiting their runs down. They'll radio information back and forth to the ski racers to let them know what type of last-minute adjustments they need to make. Snow conditions just about the same now as they were earlier this morning, Alex. Doesn't look like there'll be much uh, action in the wax rooms down in between the break, although uh, we saw people working furiously down there uh, <laughs> over the lunch hour. And uh, who knows what's going on. The Sarah's going on the top, the warm weather wax on the bottom. Uh, 
everybody trying to get that extra bit of advantage here for run number two. Absolutely, boss. You know, poor preparation leads to poor performance. These racers know that, and they have been preparing their skis for this race uh, very meticulously here. Of course, the snow softening a little bit today, a very warm day, and we can feel the warmth here in the broadcast house. A uh, six by six by eight foot room, I believe the same room they filmed the uh, hit movie Gravity uh, starring George Clooney and uh, check that boss. Well, I don't even know. Was it George Clooney? Oh, and yeah, it yes, was. Yes, yes. Sarah Bullock, is that right? And Sandra Bullock, yeah, George Clooney, Sandra. and Sandra Bullock, and we can feel the uh, low oxygen levels in this room uh, <laughs> getting us prepared for a gravity sequel. As well, we see Browns and Mangle, Amanda Engelhart now leading the pack. She is on course. Looks like we are underway, ladies and gentlemen, from Brown University. Qualifying 30th fastest after the first run, Amanda Engelhart. She is now moving into the center portion of the course into the lower third. She'll be followed by Casey Ryder from UMass. Engelhart now into the lower third, making her way into the final 12 gates, comes Amanda Engelhart from Brown University. We see this very straight section here near the bottom of this course, a lot faster than this morning's course. We can see that by Amanda Engelhart's time, bib number 67, finished with a time of 105.65, three seconds faster than the first run, so that'll give us a bit of a uh, an estimate about how fast these skiers will be coming down. Of course, we take the fastest 30 racers from the morning session, we reverse their order. We call that the flip in ski racing, and they come down in that order. So the fastest this morning, Frida Svedberg from Rocky Mountain College. She will be coming down in the 30th position. Amanda Engelhart now, our leader here in the second run of the Women's 2014 USCSA National Championships. And Casey Ryder looks like she's off course. Uh, our timing system showing that Casey Ryder looks like she's had a problem up midway up the course. And a tough break for Casey Ryder after a good first run here this morning. That's right, boss. UMass's Casey Ryder off course. She'll be done and will not receive a time for the GS today. UMass sitting in ninth after the first run. They're going to really have to pick it up here if they want to finish in the top five. Now on course from Syracuse University, it's Hillary Coates. Coates, 27th fastest this morning with a 108.81. Every second counts here in run number two as we add the time from the second run to the first. The combined time determines the final order. It's anybody's race today, although it is going to take quite a performance from any one of these ladies to outdo Frida Svedberg. Svedberg with a 102.48 in run number one, almost a second and a half faster than her teammate, Eloise Julianne, finishing second fastest after the first run this morning. As we see Hillary Coates now from Syracuse University. It's the senior Hillary Coates skiing in her final GS race as a uh, student at Syracuse University, her second national championships, a veteran, and she uh, definitely threw down a strong run there, boss. Across the stripe is Hillary Coates with a time of 107.35 in the second run. That gives her a combined time of 216.16. So Amanda Engelhart with a 105.65 in the second run. And a total combined time of 214.56 is your leader. And Hillary Coates from Syracuse in the second position. Now it's Sandra Gerlich from the University of British Columbia wearing bib 28, 27th fastest after the morning session. She was the leader in the split shack. She's got a good run going, three rates to go for Gerlich. Now Gerlich into the tuck. And across the stripe comes Sandra Gerlich. And Gerlich, with a combined time of 214.67, good enough for second place. A 105.86 in the second run. Now Kelly Rowland from Clarkson University wearing bib number 101. On course through the center section, making her way into the final third. She'll be followed by Christina Donnelly from the University of British Columbia. Now into our view comes Kelly Rowland from Clarkson University. Ten goes Gates to go for Rowland. Rowland with a first run time of 108.78. She's going to try to add to that third fastest after the second split check. Can she make up time? And across the stripe, it's Kelly Rowland with a combined time of 216.48. Good enough for fourth position. 
a 107.70 in the second run for Rowland. Gerlich had a 105.86 in her second run. Now on course, bib number 54 from the University of British Columbia, Christina Donnelly. Donnelly third fastest after the first split shack. She'll need to pour it on in the middle section of the course. And now dropping in from Castleton College, it's Blair Hooper. But Christina Donnelly, now into the final third and eight gates comes Donnelly. Donnelly from British Columbia wants to replace Rowland off the leaderboard. Here comes Christina Donnelly and Donnelly across the stripe. A run time of 106.00, combined time of 214.74, good enough for third place. So Donnelly in third, Sandra Gerlich in second, and your leader from Brown University is Amanda Englehart. British Columbia sitting on the bubble right now in fourth place after the first run. They'll need solid runs here from uh, Samantha Bisner. Her second run coming up in just a few more ski racers right now, having two ski racers from UBC sitting in the top three. So great performance by them in the second run. In the final five gates, it's Blair Hooper from Castleton College. Now Hooper, 24th fastest after run number one across the stripe in a time of 106.08 for the second run of Blair Hooper combined of 214.73. Good enough for third place. So it's Englehart, Gerlich, Hooper, Donnelly, and Coach, your top five. Still the fastest 24 to come. Sarah Gregory from Colorado Mesa University. Now on course, fourth fastest in the split shack. She'll be followed by Hobart William Smith College's Jesse, Jessica Bishop. Gregory, 23rd fastest after run number one. She's got a good run going. She'll need to pour it on with six gates to go. Blair Hooper driving to the finish line. Two gates to go and into the tuck comes Hooper. Hooper punching the strike with a time of 106.06. A combined time of 214.49 and she's your new leader. Sarah Gregory from Colorado Mesa University. Your new leader atop the leaderboard with a combined time of 214.49. So it's Gregory, Engelhart, Gerla, Hooper, Donnelly, your top five. Still the fastest 25 to come. Now Jessica Bishop from Hobart William Smith College wearing bib number three, 21st fastest after run number one, makes her way into the lower third. 12 gates to go for Jessica Bishop. She'll be followed by Marlies Combe from the University of Rochester. Meanwhile, back to live action here at the bottom. Three gates to go for Jessica Bishop. Bishop from Hobart William Smith. And across the stripe comes Bishop in a time of 108.80, a combined time of 216.94. You gotta love the way Jessica Bishop handles those steeps, boss, navigating it like a champion. She's really driving those legs into the hill there. Very uh, strong carving into those uh, top three gates of that pitch near the bottom section of this course. Now Marlies Combe from the University of Rochester on course, going wide here. Eight gates to go. She is skiing like a machine. Here comes Marlies Combe from the University of Rochester. Into the tuck. Final gate. And across the stripe comes Combe. Combe with a combined time of 2.13.11. Your new leader. Your new leader from the University of Rochester. It's Marlies Combe. A 104.97. The fastest second run so far today. A bomb run from Marlise Combe. She put it all together right there, Alex Beatty. Absolutely, boss. And she nearly lost it on those top three gates of the pitch there. Uh, almost had to check her speed a little bit, but she managed to keep all of it into those bottom three gates. We saw her fly across the finish line in the fastest second run today. Back to live action, St. Olaf College's Madison McLaughlin. Qualifying 20th fastest after run number one has three gates to go. She was eighth fastest at the split shack. Can she make up time here at the bottom as she punches into the finish corral with a combined time of 215.32? Good enough for seventh place. 107.23 in the second run for McLaughlin. Now it's Clarkson College's Taylor Manderson wearing bib 15th, 19th fastest after run number one. She'll be followed by Rocky Mountain College's Mallory Kelly now dropping in from the start shack. Meanwhile, in the center part of the course, moving to the lower third and now into the 12 gates comes Clarkson's Taylor Manderson. Manderson, second fastest at the split shack. She'll need to pour it on to take over the lead from Combe. Five gates to go for Manderson. She drives to the finish. Here comes Manderson. Will it be enough for the lead? Taylor Manderson across the stripe, third place. 214.53 combined time, 106.93 for Taylor Manderson's second run. Now Mallory Kelly from Rocky Mountain College wearing bib 86, 18th fastest after the morning session. She's second fastest after, and it looks like she's down. She's down. Mallory Kelly from Rocky Mountain College trying to pour it on in the middle section of the course. 
and it looks like she just was unable to hold the edge, Alex Beattie, a tough break for Mallory Kelly from Rocky Mountain College. Absolutely, boss. You can see the course transition from the steeps into flats. There are a lot of berms developing in this course. Uh, could have caused some trouble there for Mallory Kelly, but uh, I guess that'll be the end of her day. And Rocky Mountain, uh, a tough blow for them, but they have a very deep team. They are, of course, searching for gold here, sitting in first after the first run. And uh, they'll need to hang on here if they want to maintain that lead. Here comes Syracuse's Kirsten Weiss now on course. First fastest after the second intermediate. So she's having a very speedy run. Weiss has got it going on as she makes her way into the final pitch. Here down the head wall and eight gates to go for Kirsten Weiss from Syracuse. Weiss fastest at the split shack. Will it be enough to take over Colm? Here comes Weiss. And across the stripe, Weiss takes the lead. Kirsten Weiss from Syracuse University with a combined time of 211.99. Your new leader. 105.12 for her second run, the second fastest. So it's Kirsten Weiss, Marlise Combs, Sarah Gregory, Taylor Manderson, and Amanda Englehart, your top five. Still the fastest 15 racers to come. As now into the picture comes Samantha Bisner, the rocket ship from the University of British Columbia. She was 16th fastest after run number one, fifth fastest in the split shack. She'll need to pour it on to get on the podium now. Here comes Samantha Bisner, and into the corral is Bisner, and it's your new leader. An incredible bottom part of the course for Samantha Bisner with a combined time of 211.93, 105.10 in the second run. Bisner from UBC, your new leader. You can really see it there, Bosch. She poured on a lot of speed there at the top of this steep part. Can't stress that enough. Just handling that uh, steeps with precision there. You could see those legs perfectly parallel, grinding into the snow, and she really laid down an impressive run. Wow, indeed she did. Samantha Bisner from the University of British Columbia, your current leader. She's followed by Syracuse University's Kirsten Weiss. In third, University of Rochester's Marlise Combe. Then it's Colorado Mesa. University, Sarah Gregory, and rounding out your top five from Clarkson University, Taylor Manderson. Fast and furious excitement here for the women's second run of this national championship. Glad you're joining us here on the USCSA Broadcast Network. A big finished corral of spectators now all joining around to see who's going to take home gold today. Bisner, Vice, and Combs, your current leaders, but still the fastest to come. Remember, we take the top 30 from this morning's run. We reverse their order. We call it the flip. That's the order they come down in the second run. We take the second run time, add it to the first, and that's how we crown a national champion here today. We've got a course hold now as they uh, try to take out and smooth some of the bumps. The snow definitely here in the lower part of the uh, trail. Alex Beatty looks like it's cheesing and chunking up just a little bit. But uh, the army of ants, as you see them come down the <laughs> hill, there must be 50 course workers now smoothing this thing out. This is like a fresh course for the next racer. Absolutely, boss. You can see the level of sportsmanship here. Athletes from all the different schools getting this course ready for both their teammates and their uh, rivals here. Just smoothing down this course, getting rid of these cross ruts that have developed these berms at the edge of the uh, at the edge of the course, which can become a liability if you see some of these athletes struggling to make a turn, struggling maybe on some ice patches. They can slide into these berms that develop at the outside of each turn, and that could cause some uh, tricky situations there. I could see some tumbling action, and that's not what anyone wants. So vital to have these course workers available at all times. Not only the home of the 1980 giant slalom Olympic runs, but also the home of an Olympic course crew. Here at Whiteface, <laughs> these guys know how to throw a ski race, and in combination with over 125 volunteers from the USCSA coming in from all over the country, this is a well-kept race course, no doubt. Don't forget, live coverage on the USCSA Broadcast Network coming up all week. Tune in tomorrow as we'll bring you live coverage of the men's giant slalom. First run action begins here at USCSA.com right at 9.30 Eastern Time. Hope you'll tune in for that, and then we'll bring you, of course, live coverage of run number two, where tomorrow afternoon we will flip it and repeat it again. We'll crown a men's national champion then. But meanwhile, here in the ladies' race, it's all about Rocky Mountain College. It's all about the top qualifier from run number one, Frida Svedberg. 
with a 102.48 in the first run. Her teammate Eloise Julian with a 104.07 in run number one, a second and a half behind. Svedberg would have to have a major problem coming down, but this course, Alex Beatty, is a rough second set, and anything can happen. Frida Svedberg must be thinking about that right now in the start shack. Absolutely, boss. She's going to have to handle this very tricky and technical course, very turny up in the center section. Each turn will matter uh, vitally in that flat part of the course. A mistake can cost you dearly on time, but... Uh, Looks like uh, Frida Svedberg has a second and a half cushion there to work with. She has a lot of insurance, and she earned it with a solid run. No doubt it is a risky move to go that fast in run number one. Any small mistake can cost you a second run, and that's the end of your day. Frida Svedberg didn't care about any of that, and uh, she is certainly the one to beat. Now back to live action. Kenzie Dignas from Cornell University wearing bib 12. Into the final third, five gates to go for Dignas. Dignas, 14th fastest after the first run, third fastest at the split shack. She'll need to pour it on to take over Biz Nair. And across the stripe comes Ke Kenzie Dignas with a combined time of 211.64. Your new leader, Kels Kenzie Dignas from Cornell University. A 105.11 in the second run, 211.64. She's atop your leaderboard. So it's Dignas, Bisner, and Vice. But now back to McKenna McNabb from St. Olaf College, wearing bib number four. And she is flying down the mountain through the center section into the lower third. She's got the fastest split time. McKenna McNabb pouring it on with eight gates to go. 13th fastest after the first run, but she is skiing well now. Now edging and driving towards the finish with five gates. Four, three, two gates to go for McNabb. Will it be enough to take the lead away from Dignus? Yes, McKenna McNabb, your new leader with a combined time of 210.70 and the fastest second run time so far today at a 104.21. An incredible run for McNabb. Now Kirsten Sweeney on course. Sweeney from Babson College, 12th fastest after the first run, and she is your leader through the split shack. She's got to hang on here into the final 10 gate. Kristen Sweeney. Now driving, pointing the skis in the body downhill, trying to hold the line. Will Sweeney take the lead away from Dignus? Yes, yes, Kristen Sweeney, your new leader. With a 210.02 combined time, 103.55, the fastest second run so far today. The ladies are pouring it on as we move through the flip. Now Ali Ganesh from Brown University, 11th fastest after the first run, wearing bib 46 on court. She's in second place at the split shack. She'll need to pour it on into the final third. High atop the head wall, now down towards the corral, comes Ali Ganesh from Brown University. Skiing well, good angles, driving towards the finish. Three gates to go for Ganesh. Brown University's Ali Ganesh punches the stripe and takes the lead. Ali Ganesh, now your new leader at 209.63 combined time. A 103.29, the fastest second run. Ali Ganesh skiing well and now atop the leaderboard. So it's Ganesh, Sweeney, McNabb, Dignus, and Bisner, your top five. Still the fastest 10 to come, including Hannah Sadik. Northeast University's Hannah Sadik, 10th fastest after the morning session. She had some trouble at the top part of the course. Fifth fastest in the first split shack. She'll need to pour it on in the middle section. It's hard to build speed in the flats, but then the hard left boot turn comes throwing them into the lower third and 12 gates to go. And here she comes, Hannah Sadik from Northeast University. 10 gates to go for Sadik. She'll be followed by Christine Addy from Sierra Nevada College, but now into the finish corral comes Hannah Sadik from Northeast University. And Sadik, fourth fastest with a 104.94 in the second run, 211.01 combined time. Ali Ganesh from Brown University, still your leader. She's on the hot spot. Babson University's Kristen Sweeney in second, McKinnon McNabb in third. But Christine Addy from Sierra Nevada College wants to change it all. The Eagle making her way through the middle part of the course. Now to the top of the head wall, you'll see Addy. Addy with the fastest time so far. She's moving well through the center section, now dropping into the lower third. It's Ganesh, Sweeney, McNabb, Sadik, and Disnick, your top five. And here comes Christine Addy from Sierra Nevada College. Addy with five gates to go. Now driving the skis, got hooked up on the uh, pole, but is able to recover. 
Now points it down towards the finish line and into the stripe. It is Christine Addy taking the lead. Your new leader with a combined time of 207.82 is Christine Addy from Sierra Nevada College. So the Eagles atop the leaderboard, Alex Beatty. Absolutely, Boston. You can see why Christine Louise Addy with a solid run there, just so fast into that bottom section, just handling those steep turns so well. She could see how she just drives that downhill leg into the snow. It carries her across the hill. She's carving perfectly into those bottom few turns. Incredibly fast run, and that's why she's sitting in first, boss. Christine Addy, your new leader now with a combined time of 207.82. She's followed by Brown University's Ali Gunn. And Kristen Sweeney from Babson College in third. It's St. Olaf's McKenna McNabb in fourth. And rounding out your top five from Northeastern University, it's Hannah Sadik. Now into the finished corral. Three gates to go for Frederica Helm. Rocky Mountain College's Frederica Helm across the stripe with a combined time of 208.32. Good enough for second place. Now Sierra Nevada College's Emily Lamaro wearing bib 51, seventh fastest after the morning session. She's on course, making her way out of the top section into the technical part. It flattens out in the middle, 12 gates, 13 gates of this course, and then rocket rides down after a hard left boot turn into the head wall in the final 12 gates of this women's GS run. Emily Lamaro now. Lamaro making her way technically through the center section. Four gates to go till she drops to the lower third in the final 12. Here comes Emily Moreau, bib number 51, Rocky Mountain. Check that, Sierra Nevada College's Emily LaMoreau. Now 10 gates to go for LaMoreau. She was second fastest at the second intermediate split shack. She'll need to pour it on to take over Addy. Will it be enough for Emily LaMoreau? As she comes into the corral and takes the lead, your new leader with a combined time of 207.59, Emily Lamaro from Sierra Nevada College. So Alex, as expected, Sierra Nevada and Rocky Mountain warring it out here in run number two of the Ladies National Championship. Absolutely, boss, and the fastest six racers yet to come, including Frida Sredberg, our leader after the first run, and her teammate, Eloise Julian, both of Rocky Mountain College. They are sitting atop the leaderboard right now, but you have to imagine they're getting a little bit nervous about a potential come-from-behind victory by the Sierra Nevada squad that's been laying down some solid second runs. Next up in the Star Shack, awaiting run number two. It's Sierra Nevada College. Henrietta Hogg. And on the bubble, it is Emily Lamaro from Sierra Nevada. She will await to see if anyone can beat her combined time of 207.59. Still the fastest six racers to come. It's anybody's contest. As all eyes await Frida Svedberg from Rocky Mountain College. As it looks like we've got a course hold here as we fix some things in the middle section. Let's go down your top 10. It is Kirsten Weiss in the 10th spot from Syracuse. Samantha Bisner from the University of British Columbia in 9th. In 8th, Kenzie Dignitz from Cornell University. Northeastern University's Hannah Sadik in the 7th slot. In 6th, McKenna McNabb from St. Olaf College. And rounding your top 5 in the 5th slot, Kirsten Sweeney from Babson College. Then it's Albie, uh, Ali Ganish from Brown University in 4th. Frederica Helm from Rocky Mountain College in the 3rd slot. Christine Addy from Sierra Nevada College, your runner-up and currently your leader. From Sierra Nevada College, it's Emily Lamaro. Alex, I had a chance to talk to some of the ladies after the first run. They said the conditions were pretty consistent throughout the uh, entire race course, uh, but there's no doubt as we get here in the later part of the afternoon, temperatures warming up close to 35 to 40 degrees right now. Uh, the bottom part of this course is probably going to feel a little different underfoot than the top did. Absolutely, boss. Should be a lot softer down here near the bottom than the top. The top probably forming some icy patches, especially on that initial very steep section of the course right out of the Stargate. These racers are treated to some of the steepest terrain on the mountain here at Whiteface Mountain in beautiful Wilmington, New York. Then they are thrust into a flat section there. 
uh, where racers will have to uh, maintain their speed, stay on the uh, edges and bottoms of their skis, make sure they don't scrape off any of that momentum they're carrying until they are brought into this bottom part of the course, which, as you mentioned, must be getting a little bit soft now. We see some cross ruts developing, so these racers are treated to a lot of different conditions here on this hill, and they're really putting them through their paces. Folks having a great afternoon here in the finished corral of this women's run number two. Glad to see all the folks showing up here and they're lining up the uh, last part of the course here. Of course, Whiteface Mountain, a favorite ski destination for many folks. And we understand it's Canadian Vacation Week this week, so we welcome all of our Canadian friends here to the 2014 USCSA National Championships. Don't forget, folks, live coverage all week long. We'll have men's GS racing for you tomorrow on the USCSA Broadcast Network. Then moving on to the women's slalom right back here on Thursday. A big snowstorm planned for tomorrow night. We'll have to see how that affects competition on Thursday. Nothing better than running a national championship slalom event in two and a half feet of snow. What do you think, Alex? I'm looking forward to it, boss. Hoping to get some turns in on some fresh powder uh, this week. Should be an exciting turn of events. Now we're back to live action as Henrietta Hogg from Sierra Nevada College wearing bib 89. She is on course, has dropped in from the start shack. Hogg sixth fastest after the first run with a 105.36. As always, Coach Branco, Zagar, and the Sierra Nevada Eagles fielding an impressive ladies alpine program and team here this year. Always fun to watch them ward out with Rocky Mountain College, and it looks like today is no different than others. Henrietta Hogg now fourth fastest after the second intermediate shack split. She makes her way across the center section into the lower third. Now ten gates to go for Hogg. Late there now, trying to hang on and get back in line. She does. Had to scrape some speed and lost some time. Three gates to go for Henrietta Hogg from Sierra Nevada College. And across the stripe comes Henrietta Hogg with a time of 207.97. Good enough for third place. So it's Emily Lamoureux. The teammates, Christine Addy and Henrietta Hogg in your top three. The Eagles loading up on the podium right now, but still the fastest fifth. Five racers to go. Now on course wearing bib 14. Caroline Clayson, also from Sierra Nevada College. Fifth fastest with a 105.29 in the first run. She's fifth fastest now in the first split shack. She'll need to pour it on in the center section to make up time. Caroline Clayson now making her way out of the center section into the lower third. 12 gates to go now for Clayson. Clayson with a good turn and skiing well. Really letting the skis do the work. Here comes Caroline Clayson from Sierra Nevada College. Clayson looking to take over Limaru. Will it be enough for Clayson? Clayson bossing the stripe. And taking, no, check that, second place. Second place for Clayson. 207.78, your combined time. So it's Lamoureux, Clayson, Addy, Hogg, and Helm, your top five. But now Sierra Nevada College's Marie Nwachi wants to change all of it. Fourth fastest after the first run, wearing bib 75. A 104.93, her first run time. And she's had trouble at the top of the course. Seventh fastest. She'll have to make up an enormous amount of time through the center section. As we watch now, Marie Nuichi from Sierra Nevada College. Now Nuichi navigating her way through the center section into the lower third. 12 gates to go now. You'll see her cross over the threshold of the head wall here into the bottom section of the course. Here comes Marie Nuichi from Sierra Nevada College. Wide on the turn, now bringing it back together. Driving towards the finish is Marie Nuichi from Sierra Nevada College. Two gates to go for Nuichi. Will it be enough to take the lead? No, Nuichi. A combined time of 208.07, good enough for fifth place. It is a Sierra Nevada College party on the podium right now. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, all belonging to Sierra Nevada College. But Brown University's Natalie Pearl wants to change it. She wants to boot the Eagles off the podium from Brown. Here comes Natalie Pearl wearing bib six. She was third fastest after the first run. Having a tough time at the top of the hill. Sixth fastest in the intermediate split shack. Lamoureux still sitting atop the leaderboard on the hot seat. 
as the third fastest qualifier, Natalie Pearl from Brown University, now making her way through the center section into the lower third. 12 gates to go for Natalie Pearl from Brown University. She was seventh fastest after the second split. Here comes Natalie Pearl from Brown. Will it be enough to take off Emily Malamaro? And now across the stripe, it's Pearl with a combined time of 207.46, your new leader. Your new leader is Natalie Pearl from Brown University. She made up an enormous amount of time in the bottom third of the course, Alex Beatty. Absolutely, Boston. You could see it in the way she handled that very steep left-footed turn there right at the top of the pitch, that red gate, four red gates from the bottom. She really drove that leg in there and set that next blue gate turn up beautifully, Boss. Now Eloise Julianne, second fastest after the morning session from Rocky Mountain College, wearing bib number 33. She'll have to pick it up, slow in the top, fifth fastest at the first split shack. She had a 104.07 in the first run, the second fastest behind Svedberg. Eloise Julianne from Rocky Mountain College. As she makes her way into the final eight gates, here comes Eloise Julianne from Rocky Mountain College. She'll need to pour it on into the last three, the last two, the final gate for Julianne. Here comes Eloise Julianne and she takes the lead. Your new leader with a 206.91 from Rocky Mountain College. It is Eloise Julian. So your leaderboard, Julian, Pearl, Lamoureux, Clayson, and Addy. But the fastest from the first session, here she comes on course. It's Frida Spedberg from Rocky Mountain College. Almost a second and a half lead over the competition, but she's had a tough time in the first split shack. Fifth fastest, she'll have to pour it on in the middle. Will Eloise Julianne sneak in a national championship from Rocky Mountain College? But her teammate Frida Svedberg wants to change it. We said earlier, Alex, it would take a disaster for Svedberg to lose a second and a half. As she's now second fastest in the split shack, she's going to have to pour it on in the final eight games. Here comes Frida Svedberg. She's skiing well, fast and driving to the finish line. Rocky Mountain College is Frida Svedberg. Will she be a national champion? Yes! Sfrida Svedberg with a combined time of 204.09. The fastest second run with a 101.61. She won the race by three seconds, Alex Beatty. Frida Svedberg, unbeatable. Your 2014 USCSA national champion. Wow, what a run. <laughs> Absolutely, boss. Uh the fastest first run, fastest second run, nine times out of ten. That'll make you the winner, and today is no exception. Frida Svedberg of Rocky Mountain College takes the race easily here with a very impressive second run, the fastest by one-tenth of a second. Her teammate Eloise Julian sitting at second, and Brown University's Natalie Pearl will take home the bronze, boss. What an incredible run from Frida Svedberg. You know, we thought she might have just had one of those magic runs in run number one, but no doubt she came back and laid it down in run number two. The speed demon Frida Svedberg from Rocky Mountain College, your national champion here today for the 2014 USC Women's Giant Slalom. Congratulations to Frida Svedberg from Rocky Mountain College, your winner in the Ladies GS. Now back to live action. Brenna Murray from the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Combined time of 216.98. Second run time of 108.04. Now she'll be followed by UMass's Lindsay Tadero. Now also on course, Castleton College's Ali Spencer. And Northern Michigan University's Mallory Slicker. She awaits run number two at the top. Back to live action here at the bottom is Lindsay Tadero from UMass. Crosses with a time of 108.64, combined of 217.74. Lisa Tadaro, the sophomore out of University of Amherst, an experimental theology major, strong first and second run. Uh, Amherst has had a uh, very good showing today, making the trip from Massachusetts here, skiing on similar conditions. You have to imagine that has factored in. Allie Spencer from Castleton College, now five gates to go. She's followed by Northern Michigan University's Mallory Slicker. And crossing into the finish corral comes Ali Spencer with a second run time of 106.89 combined of 216.00.
But the day belongs to Frida Svedberg from Rocky Mountain College. Coming in with a 102-48, almost a second and a half lead after run number one. And anyone who wondered if it might have been a fluke, forget it. 101.61 in the second run, almost 1.3 seconds faster than her teammate, Eloise Julianne. But it is easy to win a national championship when you've got the hottest time in run one and run two. And no doubt, Frida Svedberg is the real deal from Rocky Mountain College. And she's going to pick up the gold today in her first national championship here at the USCSA. Congratulations to Frida Svedberg, your winner here for the women's giant slalom. Now back to live action, Mallory Slicker from Northern Michigan University. Second run time of 106.77 and a combined time of 215.99. She'll be followed by the College of Idaho's Eleanor, Eleanor Tansley. Now Tansley into the final five gates. Tansley 22nd fastest, uh, check that, 35th fastest after the first run. And now into the corral comes Tansley with a combined time of 215.52. Eleanor Tansley, the sophomore psychology major from the College of Idaho, looking forward especially to this year's dual panel slalom race. I know I am as well. One of the more exciting events to take place at this year's national championships will pit team, uh, athletes head to head. Should be a great event to watch this Saturday. You'll want to tune in to the USCSA Broadcast Network Saturday live coverage beginning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. We'll bring you both runs of the qualifyings and the finals of the dual panel slalom. If you've not seen a dual panel slalom, you'll definitely want to check it out as uh, it is one of the wildest and craziest alpine ski races we have. Our second year of running it as a national championship event and certainly the most exciting thing we saw in Sun Valley last year. Looks like we'll have another one of those here in beautiful Lake Placid this Saturday. Absolutely, boss. Looks like we lost bib number 18, Miyu Nakamura from the College of Idaho. She has skied off the course, so that'll be the end of her day in the giant slalom. Now on course is Olivia Erdman from Lafayette College. She'll be followed by Hobart and William Smith's Christine Maloney and Kayla Weber in the start house. Olivia Erdman from Lafayette College. Now three gates to go. Into the tuck comes Erdman and across the stripe, with a time of 108.08. .08. Combined time of 217.90 for Olivia Erdman. That is 217.90. Christine Maloney from Hobart Williams Smith College wearing bib 43. She was 38th fastest after the morning session. Now on course, making her way into the lower third. She'll be followed by... Looks like Kayla Weber from the University of Colorado has just dropped into the course. So Maloney and Weber, now Maloney across the stripe in a time of 108.85 combined of 218.70. And Kayla Weber from the University of Colorado wearing bib number 25, 15th fastest after the first run. And it looks like that Weber has had some trouble and that's going to be the end of the day for Kayla Weber. Tough break for Weber. She had a good first run. Definitely a different type of ski race here for the Western athletes, Alex Beatty. As uh, you have said earlier in the broadcast, very used to that soft, fluffy West Coast snow. You get back here east, it is packed in concrete, mud, hard, and icy. A totally different set for these racers from the West. Absolutely, Bob, especially on a warm day like today. We're seeing some chunks of snow being torn out of the course. Some, some little cookies on the side of the race course that can be a, a little bit of a little unnerving for maybe some of these Western athletes who aren't used to that in their normal practice routine. But someone who definitely is used to that is Castleton's Lisa Davis. This Castleton team dominant in the Eastern Division. Lisa Davis now on course for Castleton. Our technical delegate today for the women's second run is Tony Nuncoven. Wesley Nelson, our referee, and Paul Van Slyke, our chief of race. Thanks to all three of those gentlemen. Lisa Davis from Castleton College now making her way through the center section. 
Into the bottom pitch and across the head wall comes Davis. She'll be followed by Clarkson University's Casey Abraham. Lisa Davis carrying a lot of speed, maybe a little too much speed there. She has to check it a little bit, but she maintains control. That's Castleton's Lisa Davis, bib number 77. The sophomore from Castleton will finish with a combined time of 2.16.49. Lisa Davis working for UPS, and she does deliver here with a solid second run. A great finish for Castleton. Looking strong in today's race. Now Clarkson, Casey's... Casey Abraham, bib number 52, is past the second intermediate. Abraham from Clarkson now, 27th fastest. She was 40th after the first run. Looking to move up. Of course, just posting a good finish here at the USCSA National Championship. Quite an accomplishment for many of these ladies and men. Especially for Casey Abraham, boss. She broke her shoulder earlier in the season, made it back in time for nationals, and she has been strong today. Hard to imagine uh, coming back from such an injury in such a short amount of time. So a great two-run combo for Casey Abraham from Clarkson University. Combined time of 216.90. Let's give our timer caught up. Lisa Davis combined time of 216.49. Christine Maloney combined time of 218.70. And Olivia Erdman, a combined time of 217.90. Eugenia Cronenberg from Brown University now into the final four gates. She'll be followed by Annalisha Honkanen from Northern Michigan University. Meanwhile, live action is Cronenberg crossing the stripe with a combined time of 216.76. Good enough for 31st position. Now Annalisha Honkanen on course wearing bib 39. She was 42nd fastest after run number one. Always good to see the Midwest representation here at the USCSA National Championships. Of course, this year, the Midwest Mafia in the house. Setting courses, setting fencing, setting everything. They'll set you on fire if you talk back to them. But we'd like to thank them. Always nice to see new faces here at National Championships, including a big spectator crowd that's gathered around the finish corral here at the bottom of the Draper's Drop. The 1980 Olympic women's and men's giant slalom, they're taking the same run. Great memories on this course. As Annalisha Honkonen from Northern Michigan University with a combined time of 218.53. So a successful two runs for Honkonen. Now it's Nina Herner from the College of Idaho, the Yode herself out of Caldwell. Herner with an impressive run last year in Sun Valley, almost home field advantage for the Yotes. Now they're back here in the east, though, and skiing well, coached by Ron Bonneau out in Idaho, and he's put together an impressive program. As Nina Herner crossing the stripe with a combined time of 217.16. Nina Herner, the senior out of the College of Idaho, an elementary education major. This is her third national championships, a veteran skier and a legend in her own right. Nina Herner placed third overall in her conference in the USCSA. So a lot of a diverse spectrum of athletes competing in different conferences here and you can see so much parity among these competitors makes for a really exciting ski race. And one of these strong competitors here is bid number 29, Claire Hamnett of UMass. She will cross the finish line with a combined time of 218.48. Looks like we lost Megan Dineski there, bib number 91. Yeah, Megan Dineski having a tough time uh, high above the course here. That's going to end her day, a tough break for Dineski. Back to live action. Heather Durr from Penn State University. Great to see Heather Durr back at another national championship after an incredible recovery from a major injury last year. She did come to nationals, and she is back at it again. True guts from this kid. Heather Durr, the Penn State Nittany Lion, wearing bib 13. She was 46th fastest after run number one as she makes her way through the center section. We'll see her crest the head wall here in the bottom third. 12 gates to go soon for... Heather Durr. Like she's steering well in this intermediate section. Looking strong in the flats, carrying some speed now into the steeps in the lower third. Now she's popping into view. That's bid number 13, Heather Durr of Penn State. Looking strong there in that turn, maybe scrubbing a little bit of speed there. A little late on that blue gate. Four blue gates above now. Three gates to go for 
Heather Durr, bib number 13, will cross the finish line with a combined time of 220.41 for Great. Heather Durr. Great run for Heather. Nice to see her back at another national championships. Polly Evans now on course wearing bib number two from Columbia University. She was 47th fastest after the first run with a combined uh, time of 110.58. Now Evans into the last 10 gates. She'll be followed by Maggie Corrigan from WPI. A great year for Maggie Corrigan ending up here at Nationals out of the East. And across the stripe, it's Polly Evans from Columbia University, a combined time of 220.10. So Evans with a 220.10, Heather Durr, 220.41, Claire Hamnett, 218.48, and Nina Herner, 217.16. Now Maggie Corrigan from WPI. You can bet she's smiling all the way down because she never stops. Six gates to go for Corrigan. Little out of shape for Corrigan. You can tell the legs are on fire. A tough last six gate set here in this women's GS run two. Ron Bonneau setting the course today. And across the stripe, it's Maggie Corrigan from WPI with a combined time of 220.05. Good enough for 41st position. Coached by Coach Sarah and by Mark Sullivan. Nice to see Maggie here at Nationals this year. Absolutely, boss. Senior Maggie Corrigan skiing in her final collegiate GS race. As is the case for many of these athletes, skiing in their final race of their collegiate career, it's got to be a heartfelt moment for them as they balance the weight of competition and maybe a little sadness there as they uh, say farewell to their collegiate skiing career. Back to live action now at the finish line, the University of Michigan's Abigail Ellis. Ellis, 49th fastest after the first section. Now moves up to 44th fastest with a combined time of 221.57. Great to see the Wolverines represented here at the Ladies GS. Cornell University's Abigail Brown now on course wearing bib 56. She'll be followed by the University of Massachusetts, Jennifer Costello. And high above the finish corral here on the race run at the start shack it is columbia's lauren pierce awaiting run number two meanwhile back to live action and three gates to go for abigail brown now brown into the finish corral with a combined of 219.72 jennifer costello bib number 83 from the university of massachusetts now on course she makes her way through the center section. She'll be into the lower third momentarily and now dropping out of the start shack from Columbia University, it is Lauren Pierce. Here comes Jen Costello of UMass into the bottom third of the course. We got a little bit late there on that top red gate. Freshman Jen Costello making her Nationals debut for UMass. A strong skier, grew up skiing at Sunday River in Maine. Of course, Boston knows a little bit about Maine and Sunday River. It's a great place to ski. Similar conditions here at Whiteface Mountain, and uh, looks like that made a difference for Jen Costello, bib number 83. She finished with a combined time of 220.51. Sarah Schaefer from Clarkson University will be our next racer down. Let's recap your top 10 here for the Ladies Giant Slalom National Championship. Finishing in 10th slot from Brown University, it's Ali Ganesh. Frederica Helm from Rocky Mountain College in the 9th position. Then it is Marie Nuichi from Sierra Nevada College in 8th. Her teammate Henrietta Hogg in the 7th spot. Also from Sierra Nevada College, Christine Addy in 6th. Rounding out your top 5, it's Caroline Clayson from Sierra Nevada. In the fourth position, Emily Lamoureux, her teammate, also from SNC. And your podium from Brown University in third spot, Natalie Pearl. Rocky Mountain College's Eloise Julianne with a valiant attempt to knock off the winner. And high atop the leaderboard and podium from Rocky Mountain College, your 2014 USCSA national champion in the women's GS, Frida Svedberg. Now back to live action, Sarah Schaefer from Clarkson, making her way into the final three gates. And punching the stripe at Schaefer with a combined time of 220.49. 
Sarah Schaefer, the senior from Clarkson. Uh, this Clarkson team, very strong this year. They've uh, placed very well at uh, all their events this year and uh, looking good at nationals as well. A, a strong run from Sarah Schaefer, the biology and psychology major from Clarkson University. Now on course is Cornell University's Jesse Evans, bib number 72, making her way down into the bottom section of the course, driving these legs. Look at those parallel skis, perfect now towards the bottom with an impressive tuck across the finish line. Bib number 72, Jesse Evans finished with a time of 220.38, combined time of 220.39, check that, .39. Bib number 100, Aaron Luce of Castleton, the Castleton State College Spartans, well represented at today's race. Bib number 100, Aaron Luce now into the bottom section of the course as she takes this hard right-footed turn across the mountain. Now five gates to go for Aaron Luce of Castleton as she sets her tuck. Now two gates, now one gate to go. She will cross the finish line. Bib number 100 finishes with a combined time of 220.95, 220.95. Grace Glennon from the University of Massachusetts wearing bib number 82. We'll see her next as she makes her way through the center section of the course. Now dropping in from the star check, it is University of Pennsylvania's Claire Menzel wearing bib number 20. Grace Glennon now through the technical uh, center section of this course. Grace Glennon, the freshman from University of Massachusetts, coached by the able John Skinner, and you can see his influence has really shown this week. Great performance by UMass and Grace Glennon. Bib number 82 finishes with a combined time of 224.77. Good enough for 50th right now. So like we've got about 33 racers yet to come in today's GS action. A lot more solid skiing and Claire Menzel of Penn State a legendary skier for the Penn State, or for, check that, for University of Pennsylvania. Hip number 20, Claire Menzel, now on course into the bottom third. Syracuse's Kelsey Dignis wearing bib 40. She was 58th fastest after the first session. Now into the final three gates comes Kelsey Dignis. And Dignis into the finish corral with a combined time of 223.75. Nope, check that. That was uh, Claire Menzel. My bad. University of Pennsylvania's Claire Menzel with a 223.75. Grace Glennon with a 224.77. And it looks like that Kelsey Dignis, now we're going to check this as our timer makes some adjustments here. Looks like Kelsey Dignis now making her way towards the finish line. Bib number 40 for Syracuse. Skiing strong, a white blur now across the finish line. That's bib number 40. Finishes with a combined time of 223.21. Now on course for WPI, Paulina Carabalas. She'll be followed by Simona Crocolo of Castleton. And then the College of Idaho's Casey Brenner is sitting in the start gate. WPI's Paulina Carabalas wearing bib 103. Great to see the WPI athletes here at the national championships. Eight gates to go for Carabellis. WPI, the Worcester Polytech Institute, cranking out engineers by the thousands. Absolutely, boss. You can see some of their handiwork. The USCSA banner brought to you by the WPI alumni course crew. Uh, always a tricky setup there for that USCSA finish line banner. I believe last year it took about 12 hours to get that set up. The fruits of their labor on display today here at the Ladies GS Championships. And Paulina Caraballis, bib number 103, crosses the finish line with a time of 224.33. Now Castleton Simona Crocolo is on the course. It's always great to see the alum of these colleges come back and participate in the USCSA National Championships. I think this kind of ski racing and certainly this event itself means so much to these young people that, uh, well, they get away for it for two or three years, and the next thing they know, they're in the announcer's box doing it again, right? Absolutely, <laughs> boss. <laughs> it's great to be back here, as always, making a fool of myself in front of a national audience. 
Great to see all these bright young faces excited about ski racing and eager to show off their talents for the world. Everyone skiing on display here. Looks like Simone Crocolo of Castleton, bib number 34, has skied off the course. A rough break there for her in this GS competition. We'll see her back for the slalom on Thursday where she hopes to uh, finish better in a more technical race. The slalom, of course, a slower, more technical event. A lot of racers prefer that technique. Some racers I know, uh, myself, uh, I was one of them, were a little bit afraid of going too fast on the course. So uh, should be uh, should be exciting to see the difference in that slalom event on Thursday. Always the redemption opportunity. If you couldn't string two together in the GS, you can come back and try it again in the slalom. And it's always fun to watch the racers, Alex, who um, who come into the GS. It's kind of like the warm-up, and then they come back for the slalom and throw it down. Like It's uh, uh, it's always fun to, to watch these ladies. They kind of get warmed up. They're ready to go, and then they come back and let it all hang out. We'll bring you live coverage of the ladies' slalom championship here on Thursday. Live coverage at the USCSA Broadcast Network begins 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We hope you'll dial in and tune in to us. Make sure you spread the word to all your friends, families, coaches, and folks interested in ski racing as we bring you all of the coverage from the Alpine venue all week long here on the USCSA Broadcast Network. Boss Hogg and Alex Beatty kicking it to you from the Broadcast Center. Hope everybody out there in the finished corral is having a fun time. We are here. Temperature's warm here. The sun's been peeking in and out. We can see bluebird skies to our left, cloudy skies to our right, and we know two feet of snow is on the way. <laughs> <laughs> we do, boss. Looking forward to that with trepidation, as I'm sure Casey Benner is of the College of Idaho. Bib number 68 is skied out of the course. She is done for the day. Emily Visnick of Northeastern hoping for a different result now as she makes her way towards the finish, navigating these very steep final few turns of this course. You have to imagine her legs are exhausted now as they carry her across the finish line. A green pock helmet blur is bib number 38, Emily Visnick. The Downton Abbey fan fiction major out of Northeastern University finishes with a time of 224.68. She'll be followed by Lafayette's Margaret Del Cole now making her way down the course. Del Cole into the center section now. Very technical in the center section. And then that hard left boot turn down to the head wall right there, as you can see. It has definitely given some of these racers uh, some problems, including uh, five or six out of the first run. But a successful run, number two for Margaret Del Cole. Meanwhile, Ashley Yevien is down on course as Margaret Del Cole from Lafayette University crossing the stripe in 226.63 combined time. So a tough break for Ashley Yevien wearing bib number 64. She had a good first run at 112.98, but had tough time on the second run. That'll be the end of her day. Back to live action, wearing bib 50 from Penn State University, the Nittany Lion, Allison Kowalski on course. She'll be followed by Becca Wan, her teammate also from Penn State. A big day for Rocky Mountain College's Frida Svedberg. Your winner today, the fastest first run at 102.48, the fastest second run at 101.61. She was literally unbeatable today. You know, Alex, we sensed that as we watched her come down earlier this morning. That was a time to beat. It almost, she made it look effortless. And uh, it would have really taken some major league problems for Svedberg to uh, give back a second and a half after run number one. But she didn't mess around and didn't play it safe either. She came in with the fastest time by 1.2 seconds in the second run. That's literally a blow away. Frida Svedberg, unbeatable today in your national champion. Absolutely, boss. Consistency, the name of the game. That's why you get two runs. You have to finish solidly in both of them if you want to be a national champion. And Frida Svedberg did want to be a national champion, and she is. So impressive performance today from Frida Svedberg of Rocky Mountain College. Meanwhile, Allison Kowalski from Penn State University crossing the stripe with a combined time of 229.14. Let's give our timer some help here. Margaret Del Cole, combined time of 226.63. Emily Visnick, 224.68. Paulina Carabellis, 224.33. And Kelsey Dignis, 223.21. Three gates to go now for Becca Wong. 
The Nittany Lion across the stripe in a combined time of 229.99. So a good two-run combo for Becca Wan. Now it's British Columbia's Kayla Johnston on course, wearing bib number 69. CSUS. Caitlin Porter wearing bib 125, one of our final runners to come down in run number one. She is on course. Kayla Johnston from the University of British Columbia. Three gates to go for Johnston. And Johnston across the stripe with a combined of 227.32. It's Kayla Johnston, the senior Canadian studies major out of British Columbia, finishing with a solid time. British Columbia sitting on the bubble with Brown University battling it out for that third place spot. Could be anyone's race here with St. Olaf and Clarkson also in the mix. We'll get you those results for the team competition as soon as they become available. Right now, Northeastern University's Lindsay Wright, bib number 59, making her way down the course. She'll be popping into view shortly. She'll be followed by Syracuse University's Amy Menapace. Menapace awaiting run two at the Star Shack. Bib 59, Lindsay Wright from Northeastern University. She was 69th fastest after the first run. And she now makes her way past the halfway mark through the technical flat section of this course down Draper's Drop. Of course, the same run used in 1980 for the women's GS. Right back at it for the USCSA National Championship. And it appears like a beaver has now skied up and is sitting in front. Is he a squirrel? He's a squirrel. Is he a squirrel or a beaver? He's a squirrel. I think, no, he's a beaver. He's a beaver, yes. And, and there's some other animal. Oh, the, the, whole, the whole crew is here now. They have, too, come to enjoy some exciting collegiate ski racing here, all part of the 2014 USCSA National Championships, as Lindsey Wright from Northeastern University crossing the stripe with a time of 231.10. Now Amy Minapace from Syracuse on course. Tommy Chipman from Penn State University also on course. And then we'll see Zainab Elder from Columbia University. Oh, and a tough turn and lost a ski. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Let's hope that uh, Amy Menapace from Syracuse University is okay. Menapace had a tough time navigating that far right top gate and lost the ski and walks away because she's rugged. So a tough break for Menapace, but she's all right. She'll be back Thursday for the slalom. Now it's Penn State University's Tommy Chipman wearing bib number 74 on course. Looks like Amy Menapace owes a couple thousand uh, NAR points to the Bank of NAR right now. Losing a couple skis there on that hard left-footed turn that's claimed a couple racers. But Tommy Chipman of Penn State handling it well now as she navigates these bottom few turns. Driving those legs in, has to scrub some speed there for the final few gates, but she will cross the finish line. That's bib number 74, Tony Shipman of Penn State. will finish with a time of 232.59. She'll be followed by Columbia's Zainab Edger, bib number 49, now on course. Meanwhile, a small course hold as we uh, take care of Amy Menapace's equipment malfunction up there, high atop the head wall in the final third here of the ladies' GS run. Our valiant course workers making their way up there to uh, recover her ski so she can make it down and clear the course as we get ready. And here comes Columbia's Zena Bedger. She'll be followed by Rebecca Friends from the University of Wisconsin in Madison. The Midwest well represented here at the 2014 National Championships. Always good to see the teams from the Midwest come. Often, Alex, as you know, not a lot of big mountains up in the Midwest. So uh, many times when they come east or west for a national championship, often uh, some of the steepest terrain that they see and, and are able to train. And it's great to see them throw down incredible performances here on terrain that's just not, uh, not natural to them. Absolutely, boss. And even in some of the courses we uh, ski in the east, the steeps that you see on this race trail are just unlike anything many of these athletes train on, and they're really holding up well, as is Edger, Zainab Edger of Columbia. She'll finish with a time of 233.99. That's bib number 49, Zainab Edger 
grew up in Istanbul, Turkey. So a, uh, a United Nations here uh, skiing in the USCSA, competitors from all around the globe and just an incredible level of competition, even from athletes growing up at, on the streets of big cities where you, you don't see too many ski hills. Of course, Turkey uh, has uh, some, some big mountains there in, in the uh, in the west, in the east, but uh, not too many big hills down in Istanbul. So, uh, just great to see these athletes competing at such a high level. Indeed, Rebecca Friends from the University of Wisconsin Madison now across the stripe into the corral with a combined time of 238.70. Northeastern University's Victoria Hone wearing bib number 99. She was 74th fastest after run number one. She'll be your next racer down, and then it is as easy as easy from WPI. Wearing bib 105, a great season for Azizi from Worcester Polytech. Ivy Lapp from Northern Michigan University awaiting her second run from the start jack. Back to live action here and four gates to go from Northeastern University's Victoria Hone. And Hone punching the stripe with a combined time of 233.83. Nice to see all of the characters here and around the USCSA National Championships. We'll be right back here tomorrow, 9.30 start time for run number one of the men's GS. You won't want to miss it. Rocky Mountain College and Sierra Nevada College, they maintain the war, and we will see it tomorrow. Frank R. Zagar's team up against Jerry Wolf's team. You know, the great thing about these rivalries, Alex Beattie, is that on the mountain it is fierce and furious, and as soon as the race is over, it is friends and friends and more friends. It's really great camaraderie to see these teams fight it out so hard. Uh, and then in the evenings at awards, they're all happy talking and friends and uh, really is just the, the epitome of what the USCSA is. Great competition during the day and uh, great friendships and great camaraderie is at night. Absolutely, boss. Sportsmanship is the name of the game, even at this high level of competition. So many great rivalries and friendships in the USCSA, and it's great to see these athletes competing. Now on course, it's Ivy Lapp. Ivy Lapp skiing for Northern Michigan University as Lapp makes her way through the center section of the course. And now to the bottom, it's Ivy Lapp across the stripe in a time of 232.90. Hillary Sapp from the College of Idaho wearing bib 96. She's next. She'll be followed by WPI's Lindsey Wilson and Syracuse's Anna Rosenblum. She awaits run number two from the start chat. Just want to catch you caught up on bib number 105, Azizi Asmar as Kidot's time. That's bib number 105, finished with a time of 232.62. Now on course, the College of Idaho's Hillary Sapp. Idaho struggling today with a lot of their top racers going down earlier in the competition, but bib number 96, Hillary Sapp handles the course like a champion, and she will finish with a time of 234.72 for bib number 96. Lindsay Wilson from Worcester Polytech wearing bib 106. She is now on course. Wilson should be coming into view momentarily. She makes her way through the center section into the lower third. She'll be followed by Anna Rosenblum from Syracuse University wearing bib 87. And awaiting run two from the Star Jack from Northern Michigan, it's Elizabeth Wolf. Now at the top of the